a lot of people like to say that they're ready. And I was thinking, however, do we consider ourselves as being worthy? Good question. Very good question. That's kind of like um, what I was saying in terms of a lot of people are tuning in. Is that spelling right? Tuning in. Yeah. But are they tuned in? It may sound a bit funny hearing it that way, but like you've just asked, there is a reason for this, what we're doing, right? Many people talk about the chosen few, or people say the 144,000, or you hear phrases like, many are called, many are called, and you hear the phrase that few are chosen. Right, so these terms and this whole thing, even when you deal with Islam, people say to you, you have to be on the suratul mustaqim. And when you ask, what does that mean? It means the straight and narrow path, right? And the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, in the Man from Planet Risk book, explained to us that this Suratul Mustaqim, or the straight and narrow path, is, a, is actually a physical path when those who were chosen, or shall I say, before you're chosen, you have to prove yourself, as you said, worthy, right? You have to be worthy because even Jesus said that you can't take pearls and throw them to swine, right? And that was again a metaphor for saying that if it was that easy for everyone to make it, there wouldn't be any trials and tribulations. Even the book of Revelations talks that you have to go through trials and tribulations. And that's to select out of those that are called, those that are chosen. So you're right, because there's so much information being put out in the world now, and a lot of people are putting out information and it sounds heavy. Everyone thinks they know it. Everyone thinks, yeah, um, I'm ready. I know about, you know, Anunnaki. I know about, you know, I've been studying. I've been reading the scriptures. But they forget that there is a process. There's somebody that is going to be doing the choosing, right? And that someone is where people say the names are written in their book of life for these people that are going to make it. So you're right to be... Worthy, meaning, are you worth, are you worth it? Are you somebody that represents that godliness, that spiritual being, that person that is tuned in? Not just tuning in and watching videos and reading books, and, but are you turning yourself inside out? Are you cleaning yourself inside out? Are you one of those beings that is doing the works because they say knowledge alone without works is in vain. You can't just, even in Wu Sabat, the master teacher teaches that there are many people that are studying the information, studying the scrolls, studying the language, but if they're not putting it into action and implementing what they're studying, then it's like it's all in vain. And how you put it into practice is by what we call a shuk, right? So there's an actual part of that called the three loves, right? That explains what a shuk is because when you're dealing with the three types of love, you know, you're dealing with love for yourself. You're dealing with love for like your mate, right? But the, the love that a shuk is dealing with is the love that we say is unconditional. So, unconditional, meaning that it shouldn't be about how you feel about somebody because unconditional love is not based on how you feel or how you feel about a person. So whatever differences or whatever clashes you may have with somebody, if you, if you use a shook, you should allow a shook, which is unconditional love, right, 
to override everything else because unconditional love is we've got to get the job done regardless of our differences. We've got to come together, work together, and by your works, right, that's individually as well as collectively. So when you're individually working on yourself, you start to change. You change your aura, you change the, the food you eat, you change the way you think, you represent culture because there are lots of people teaching but they can only take you so far and they can't give you your entire culture as we say your, your dress your language your way of practicing how you communicate with your ancestors are we building are we working together because like the master says it's not an individual alone that's going to free him it's a collective task so yes your question is such a good question because just because you think you're ready does not mean you're ready because somebody has to tell you you're ready. So if you were studying for a course, you could be doing, you know, your homework, turning up for class, etc. But ultimately you have to take an exam. You have to be put in front of the person who's going to decide whether you're worthy or not. And to a certain degree, that is also you because you put in the work. But really, the only being that can tell you is the person that's got the books, the, sorry, the list of names in the book, and that's Parna Babianon. That's Dr. Malachi Z. York. So in order to be ready, in order to be worthy, you have to practice a shuk, which is unconditional love, and it's not about lip service. It's not about just reading the books. It's not about just wearing the clothes or the oils. This is what religion does. Religion teaches people to be basically idle, yeah? Idle, meaning that they're not doing anything, right? And this is, again, a trick on word because when you say idol, you say you're worshipping idols, but you're really worshipping idly because you're not doing anything with all the knowledge and all the information and all the skills and all the things that you have been given, yeah, as a being to help you to prepare so that you can be chosen to be amongst those many that are called and only a few, only a small group of people will walk this walk because when you start to walk this path of righteousness or what people call, you know, spirituality, you have to, it's not just talking, you have to really change and, you know, you have to see that you are transforming yourself from you know, like you have, you're, you're, most people are disagreeable on the planet right now. The way they think, they're very selfish. Me, myself and I, me, I'm ready, I'm ready. But it's not about the me, right? Look at this. When you take the word me, what you have to do is flip mode it and you get the we. Because the W is the M upside down. So most people are negative negative which gives a disagreeable aura you've got to then change that negativity to at least start being negative and positive and then you transform from a negative positive to a positive positive and in our doctrine that's like having 180 degrees yeah what people will call disagreeable plus 180 degrees of what people will call agreeable yeah, and then the two together, once one conquers the other, so you become predominantly, it's not that you don't have the two natures, but when you're predominantly, like there are people who just deal with disagreeable thoughts, disagreeable actions, their energy field is disagreeable, their aura is disagreeable, you walk in the room, you can feel them, and then they transform themselves from being that disagreeable being to being more positive, so they now conquer the other side to become 360 degrees of 360 degree of positive if this one conquers um, that one and then the same thing happens you have 360 degrees of positive 360 degrees of what people consider negative but we say agreeable and disagreeable and then you do the same thing so you're increasing in a being that maybe was once more negative right and the positive conquered the disagreeable now you're more of a being that's 360 disagreeable, but on a higher level, sorry, 
360 degree positive but on a higher level because 360 is double 180, then you do the same thing again. And then when you conquer again, if the 360 conquers the 360 disagreeable, you get to being a 720 degree being, which is like becoming the highest of yourself. So you've gone from 180 degrees, let's say negative, to being 360 degree positive, and then you've done it again. And you can go the other way too. So you could be positive, and you're doing lots of disagreeable things, and you become 360 degree negative, which is even more disagreeable than the 180 degrees, and then you do the same thing and you become a 720 degree disagreeable being, you see. So really there are two sides and this is where most of the wars on the planet and what we're talking about is humanity that or anybody on the planet who is tuning into the, the positive side will say is truth, yeah? Regardless, doesn't matter what colour you are, what age you are, if you're on the side of truth, as opposed to the side of lies, which is the other side, yeah? And these two are polarities that create um, an aura on the planet, you know? You have an individual aura, you have a collective aura, and you have the planet itself has an aura based on, you know, the, the amount of the balance between negativity and positivity, or agreeable and disagreeable. So. There's something called the entropy effect, right? The entropy, um, which deals with the vibration. Um, entropy, pH. Maybe I'll... Entropy. I might have thought that a bit wrong, but entropy, which deals with the balance on the planet because the more negativity there is, the planet is vibrating in a, a more chaotic way, and so it has to be balanced out by more positivity. So what Wu Sabat does and what you know we're doing is getting people to become more positive by applying truth as opposed to applying lies which are based on belief and based on emotions, based on I think I'm better than you. So we will try and kill you, conquer you, subdue you, etc. etc. Um, so yeah it is about being worthy and proving yourself. And if you look at the, ca the um, conditions of the planet, a lot of the problems that are on the planet are because people don't know what they need to do to be you know, more agreeable or more positive. And that's worldwide. But the changes are taking place because the dimensional shift, um, the frequency shift, the consciousness shift, where we are now in the Aquarian age is all about, you know, you deciding which side you stand on. And some people refer to this as, you know, the Armageddon or the War of Good and Bad. But even though Armageddon is not really what they, you know, people are saying it from a religious point of view. It's really about you transforming yourself and changing from being a disagreeable being now, disagreeable is not the same as good and bad because you can be a disagreeable being but still utilise in an agreeable way. Um, so that, for example, like I keep saying, like if you have to defend yourself, you're going to need your disagreeable side in that sense because when you do something that people may consider disagreeable, sometimes it's necessary to bring about the change. But really, it should be about, you know, aligning yourself on this side with the nine ether, because nine ether um, deals with balance, and this side deals with a lot of chaos. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's about being worthy, and you prove yourself by way of your actions. Yeah, your actions. And your actions are recorded in your matrix. So your hands, they record energetically everything you've ever touched because you have a matrix, you have information. Your eyes, their solar panels, they record everything you've ever seen. Your tongue records everything it tastes because it's all data that's being constantly collected by you, you know, as, as that being that is able to record everything that you do. 
and this is the concept given to you in religion, especially in Islam, of having, you know, two angels, one on your left hand side and one on your right hand side, who are constantly recording and monitoring what you do. So you can't really lie because everything is recorded and your matrix will speak for itself when we start to look at when you're being deemed to be worthy or not, the information you have recorded by way of your, your thoughts, your actions, your intentions as well, um, these higher beings that are doing what people are calling the judgment um, are going to be able to look at you, look at your matrix, look at your aura, look at the deeds, look at your intentions, look at the things you've done and determine whether or not you're worthy. All right? Until the next time, peace and love. Wadu.